give or develop a health ecosystem because major participation is going to come from private people and therefore uh, we need to develop that ecosystem by duly leveraging upon the open interoperable standard based digital systems and which also secures confidentiality and privacy of the patients uh, aishwan bharat digital mission is still voluntary and every person who can who has to come into the has to opt in for it next please so uh, this is the slide which can uh, directly tell you what uh, we want to do so aishwan bharat digital mission can be uh, loosely compared with a socket and different plugs can plug in and then uh, whatever data that they create and store for themselves in their own servers or in their own clouds becomes uh, accessible and interoperable across different uh, health information users so health information lockers could be there government health programs could be there general practitioners who are practicing individually could be there private hospitals could be there laboratories could be there ANMs, ashas uh, frontline workers could be there government hospitals could be there any kind of uh, uh, stakeholder which is involved here uh, they they can have their own solutions their own uh, systems uh, to create digital data but if they follow a set, certain protocol that uh, digital data can become interoperable across uh, uh, to other stakeholders too next please so uh, this is uh, these are the different HMISs or LMISs or PHR or the personal health record of phone applications, which are enabled or compliant with our standards and protocols. We have our own sandbox and on our sandbox, we have around 100, 101 players who have completed various levels of integration and around, around 700 of them are still on our sandbo uh, sandbox too, which are in the process of integrating their software and solutions with us. So in the micro site, uh, you'll see that uh, these are the HMIS and LMIS which are going to be promoted to the private uh, uh, healthcare providers uh, so that they adopt to these LMIS, HMIS or PHR applications and then use them, create digital data and then that digital data could be then accessed by the patients. Next please. Uh, where are we now in Aishman Bharat Digital Mission? Uh, uh, you'll see in this slide that uh, in the uh, top row we have seen we have put a potential reach and in the bottom row we have put uh, where are we now so india has 144 144 crore population and we have already uniquely identified uh, uh, the indian citizens by the aishman bharat health accounts we have we have covered around 38 crore uh, aishman bharat health accounts have been created across india Around uh, 2.03 lakh, 2.03 lakh uh, health facilities have been registered across out of approximately 20 lakh uh, health facilities. Similarly, we have uh, linked about 26 crore health records, digital health records with these ABHA numbers. And uh, by an estimate, there are around 600 crores records which are or encounters, health encounters being done in India per year. Uh, we have uh, around 2.03 lakh health professionals also registered with us um, uh, out of an estimate of 50 lakh health professionals who are present in India. Currently, doctors and nurses are only, are, are only on our HPR registry. And uh, 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 recently, we have launched some uh, OPD registration through QR codes and uh, out of uh, them, we are taking care of around 16.7 uh, lakh tokens or Registration of OPD has been done through electronic mode out of the total of 430 crores OPD that happens in India by an estimate of on every year. So we have huge, huge market potential, huge universe to cover and uh, we are progressing towards it. Next please. Wow, what are the challenges uh, that we are encountering while uh, uh, pushing for adoption of ABDM? Just to hold Hello.
I'm sorry. Uh, so what are the challenges that you are facing when we are pushing for ABDM adoption is uh, we find that there is limited awareness about ABDM and uh, especially the private sector is yet to pick up and uh, yet to adopt Aishman Bharat digital mission or use the ABDM enabled HMIS system. You will see that many of the private players are already using digital solutions and digital uh, technologies, but uh, those technologies and solutions are still not ABDM enabled. So uh, that is one thing that uh, we see. And we also see that resistance is coming from them, uh, from shifting because uh, doctors don't want to type, etc. This kind of behavioral change also that uh, we are thinking, we, we think that this is one of the major roadblocks. Then uh, fragmented distribution of ABDM enabled providers uh, and uh, real benefits and use cases jo hai, wo is unrealized because uh, this seems to be kind of futuristic to people and uh, we are not able to showcase them the immediate use case of uh, they shifting to uh, digital technologies. So, um, and ag again, uh, limited knowledge of ABHA and its benefits among patients is also one of the roadblocks or challenges that we see while we want to increase the adoption of Aishwan Bharat digital mission. Next, please. So, for this, uh, what we did is uh, with the help of two uh, partners, uh, one of uh, one of them is Path and another is Chai. What we did is we developed one of the microsite. By microsite, we mean that uh, in that uh, limited uh, geography or a uh, limited area, we are uh, these people have approached all the private doctors in those areas and asked them and persuaded them to become on board on ABDM, create their own uh, uh, unique identifications of health professionals and their facilities, health facilities, and then asking them to use an ABDM enabled uh, management information system through which they can uh, digitally handle the patients and create their records and then can also provide those records to the patients uh, which are interoperable, which patients can use when they go to another uh, uh, healthcare professional too. So this kind of thing that ground people started to do. And uh, in Mumbai, we started this in, uh, I think last October, we started in seven wards of Mumbai and uh, the field forces started to approach the private practitioners in all those seven wards and uh, started getting them onboarded and uh, conducted sessions and training sessions and IC activities, pamphlets, booklets, etc. were uh, made for them. And then uh, when they started using HMIS as solutions, we see that some of the results coming out of them. Uh, the lower arrow shows that around 3000 doctors were approached and uh, we see that 800 plus adopted uh, the ABDM enabled HMISs, 900 plus uh, uh, registered on our health professional registry and 850 plus uh, registered on our health facility registry also. And we see that more than 10,000 ABAs and electronic health records were generated. These are electronic and uh, interoperable records that they generated. So people or private practitioners changed their habit of uh, from analog uh, using analogous uh, solutions to digital solutions and then they started creating these uh, electronic records too. So similar micro site was also launched with the help of another partner, Chai in uh, Gujarat and Ahmedabad. Next please, Saurabh. And there we see that uh, uh, it has just started in the month of March 2023. And uh, we and we have mapped the universe of around 800 practitioners in Ahmedabad and 600 practitioners in Surat with uh, to whom we need to approach. And um, one of the interesting thing in this micro site is that uh, and the officers uh, or the officials who were approaching these uh, private practitioners were already uh, having a rapo or uh, a rapo with the, those practitioners as they were as they were being approached for jeet program too so our program was kind of piggybacked over that program and then they started persuading them so it has just started in the month of march but we are seeing them uh, good results out of this microsite too so uh, I think uh, by this you will be uh, you will be clear about the concept of microsite. But microsite, we just think that uh, if we in a limited geography, control geography, if people are there and then they are approaching the private practitioners, we will be able to showcase that how AVDM functions in a limited geography. And this will not this will tackle many of the challenges that we saw in the earlier slide. That uh, limited awareness, private practitioners, and changing of behavior of the doctors and uh, awareness among people about using digital technologies 
uh, gaining their trust, etc. And also use case and people will be able to see that uh, this is immediate use uh, of immediate use to them and it is uh, solving, making their life simple. So um, uh, by, the, that, by that success in those two microsites, we approached uh, one of our uh, uh, steering body, uh, Aishman Bharat Digital Mission is steered by the Honorable Health and Family, uh, Family Welfare Minister uh, and the body uh, uh, meeting took place on 12th of April. And then we approached them and told them and they told us that why don't you do this uh, across India? You should target 100 microsite project uh, uh, across India and two, three microsites should be present in every state. So, and then uh, some of the funds were also earmarked for this. And then, uh, but it is that the fund will be disbursed according to the milestones which are getting achieved. So milestones could, has to be objective, like how many HPR or how many professionals are getting registered with us, how many facilities are getting registered with us, or how many digital records are getting created by those doctors by using the ABDM enabled hospital management information system. So uh, next please. Uh, so these are some of the objectives. Uh, many of them I have already covered that we can showcase the multiple benefits of ABDM to both the patients as well as the providers. We can increase the adoption, especially among the private sector uh, labs. We can encourage newer strategies and innovations uh, because we'll be having some learnings out of them. And then we can also come up with some new news, use cases or we can come up, we can learn some new problems or challenges that people face while uh, using digital technologies. And uh, this will increase the ownership of the state uh, in the mission. And uh, uh, these issues and challenges uh, will help us to scale this Aishman Bharat digital mission on to another stage also. And then, um, then we can scale it up across the uh, different parts of the country too, because we are thinking of establishing this microsite in different uh, uh, states. Next, please. Uh, this is how we are thinking of implementing it, uh, that first we are going to identify the sites and partners because the uh, identification of the sites and then uh, mapping the partners against those sites is one of the, uh, one of the basic thing that we need to do first before uh, doing anything else. And then uh, because the partners would be having their own strengths and capacities and regional uh, uh, priorities also. So that has to be first seen and mapped. Then uh, we have also, we have done some uh, work for this also. We have, uh, we have started uh, initiate any uh, primer, uh, I'll say primary uh, dialogue with the states also that what kind of, what are the areas, what are the geographies that they are looking for establishing microsite in their states. Then what we do is uh, then we plan and implement, uh, then we orient and capacity build the partners uh, and the local force uh, who are going to approach the private doctors. We map the universe that like we mapped in the uh, Gujarat microsite that 800 uh, practitioners are available in Ahmedabad and 600 are available in Surat. So this kind of mapping is done and then we plan the visits and then we support uh, while people on board onto our platform. We give them sensitization workshop and periodic uh, training are provided. Grievance is uh, grievance redressal is done. Then monitor and supervision mostly falls into the uh, kitty of the state mission directors of Aishman Bharat Digital Mission. They are going to implement, monitor, and supervise this. Uh, obviously, uh, overall uh, framework or overall uh, feedback can be done by NHA. Overall guidance and supervision can be done by NHA. And then uh, payment would be done, uh, as I've already mentioned, it is going to be done on the basis of uh, objective criteria of the onboarding of doctors or creation of digital records, etc. So uh, the payment will be done to the states and then the state will be doing to the partners. Uh, the role of NHA uh, would be overall guidance, overall making up of guidelines, implementation framework, etc. Training, capacity building, coordination, and then periodic monitoring and supervision. The role of state mission directors would be identification of microsite and partner organization and mapping them across, across each other. Then ensuring capacity building and mo regularly monitoring and then re uh, reviewing and feedback sharing with the partners. Timely payment of the fund to the partners would also be done from the, by the state. So NHA would be paying to the state and states would be paying to the partners. Next please. So partners, uh, partners would be required to prepare a complete proposal for the microsite that how are they going to do it? How many workforce would be involved? How, what is the universe present in the microsite? How many doctors are there? How many doctors are to be approached to? 
and then uh, preparing a strategic plan for it, implementing as per the policies and guidelines. So major part of implementation would be done by the partners. And then uh, regular coordination with the state team, also, they will also do and they will receive payment based on the performance and milestones achieved. Next, please. So in this meeting, uh, uh, let me pause here and uh, uh, hear any questions that comes to your mind about Aishman Bharat Digital Mission or Microsite. Then we can start discussion about uh, the different buckets you have tried to bucket uh, what kind of discussion that we want to have with you people and uh, uh, what are your thoughts about all this so any questions that come up you know, that comes to your mind uh, in relation to the presentation uh, that we took uh... Uh, hello this is uh, samir here from neurosynaptic communications uh, my question is uh, is this uh... Uh, plan or the microsites plan uh, limited to any particular type of organization, private limited, NGOs, non-government or Section 8 or uh, hospitals or any, any particular type of organizations? So by organization, I understand that uh, uh, you are asking about the partners or the people who are to be approached to. So primarily we are thinking partners. of partners. Okay? So partners, we are not limiting it to any partner. So any partner who can have that kind of field force, who can approach the private practitioners, especially the private practitioners, we are thinking of uh, approaching them because these people uh, would be having their own priorities to uh, cater to while we approach them on any given day. They'll be having huge lines of patients before them and their own uh, OPD timings would be present. But then people, uh, if they regularly go there and uh, develop a repo, then they'll be onboarded and they'll be able to see that what benefits lies uh, if they shift to uh, digitally, uh, you know, uh, handling their patients, onboarding of ABDM and then using their HMISs. So partner organization could be anybody. Uh, only one or two things that comes to my mind is uh, uh, the partner organizations. Some partner organizations are not allowed to take payment from government of India. So obviously those partner organizations couldn't could not be part could not uh, be partnered with. Otherwise, if some partner organizations are having presence in the states and then they have that kind of field force, uh, it would be very good. And uh, added advantage could be if they already have some uh, engagement with the private providers or healthcare providers, it could be an added advantage. Okay, thank you. So this is Ram from Care India. My question is, um, what about uh, it's only limit to private practitioners and private hospital or uh, left out government practitioner and uh, government uh, facilities should be included in the microsite. Also, in, it is beyond urban tier two, tier three cities also. So, um... See, primarily, uh, we were focusing on the private providers. Then uh, we have also internally discussed about it that it can be extended to any kind of uh, doctors or any kind of why limited why limited to uh, why limited to a limited geography. Also, people can be having affinities uh, uh, by some other uh, factor also. So uh, maybe all the doctors of ESIC, all the doctors of CGHS. All the doctors, any other government programs could also be one of the microsites that can be developed. But then, as we were thinking that some of the parts, uh, as the states are going to lead it, then uh, obviously, uh, uh, and uh, we wanted to say that uh, once a digital record is created by a private practitioner, that digital record becomes interoperable, can be used on a pharmacy, can be used on another private private healthcare provider. Then the use case of uh, seeing the interoperable longitudinal health record and in complete control of the patient becomes easily visible to the patient and then people would be able to see that how it is beneficial to them so that was the initial idea but yes uh, it can be extended to other uh, healthcare providers too so initial idea was to have have increased adoption with the private sector uh, practitioners but uh, yes it can be extended it depends upon what kind of site has been chosen by the state or what site has been agreed upon by the state and the partner also. So we are open about it. Thank you, sir.
so um, let me uh, just uh, go to this last slide in this last slide what we were thinking is uh, we wanted to know from all eight of uh, all eight entities who are present in this call that what kind of domain experience that you people have what kind of is, are you having already having a private providers engagement with you are you having uh, experience in the digital health network uh, uh, i have been told that some of the entities attending this call have uh, uh, exposure to digital health also then what kind of working model would be suiting you uh, to work with uh, 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 we know that uh, for nikshe or uh, central tv program uh, there is a level 1 and there is a level 2 partner and level 1 part level 1 partner only provides guidance and monitoring while the actual uh, uh, actual work on the ground is done or implementation is done by the level 2 partners so what kind of model would be uh, uh, would you be comfortable in doing this kind of work is whether we go ahead with the two tier model or we keep it open to be one single tier or two tier model both and uh, uh next thing would be uh, do you people have any specific area or region where you would be interested to work in or how comfortable you people would be to work in remote areas like hilly areas etc and then uh, i have already mentioned can all of you do all of you can receive fund from a government organization like nha or state uh, mission directors and uh, do you have any already existing engagement with the state where uh because of that state program you are engaging with a private uh, practitioner or private doctors if you are already doing that kind of work we can right away start or ask the state government to you know kind of uh, piggybacking that program that we did in chai or gujarat program gujarat microsite so these are some of the areas that we want to hear your thoughts about so i'll ask shobhit to invite uh, every uh, member uh, or every team in this call to give their thoughts about these uh, three four points maybe we can start one by one with all thank you sir um, i can see the hand from tvl team raised uh, mr vikas if you can please uh, uh, talk about and uh, it would be good if you can uh, briefly uh, take care of all these four points as well uh, in the reply so that we have an idea of uh, what what is the situation with our partners please pbl team yeah. thanks shobhit um, dr shobhit actually i raised my hand to find out like one of the major question which comes across when we talk about the digital health is about the data privacy thing probably you that that might be taken care as well but just wanted to have like we are asking the private providers and everyone to feed the data in uh, in this uh, hmis so what would be the data security related measures which were taken up which which are in place so that it would be easy to talk to the providers or the labs was my point which i wanted to ask mm. while i mention uh, these points uh, yes we have been working with in the first bucket we have an experience of working with private providers in four states in india in delhi Raj, uh, delhi haryana andhra pradesh and telangana we worked for them we worked with them on the inter, uh, on notification of tb care, tb patients and and treat, giving treatment adherence to the tb patients and at present also we are implementing jeet in five states in india where uh, we are focusing on the ltbi interventions latent tb infection interventions at this point of time however there is a private provider component also where we are looking out to work on with the private providers to uh, initiate uh, uh, tb tb prevention therapy to these uh, index patient household contacts so that's how it uh, we have a link with the private provider engagement and we also have an experience of working on the digital health where we work on Uh, we developed certain apps for ourselves where which one we use with the informal providers for referring of tb patient people with tb like symptoms to the ntp and following up and we also have used an app called connect for life where we have, we looked after the treatment adherence of the drug resistant tb patients who are been treated by the private sector so so in that way we have touch base on all these things and of course these days many of the projects are also working on the app based 
uh, updates. So we have that uh, digital health related uh, matters. And yes, we are a trust. We are eligible to receive funds from the government and um, existing in the sense like we don't have any monetary relationships with the government as of now in these states where we have entered into informal, uh, sorry, non-financial agreements with the state governments to support their work. In Delhi, we run uh, uh, designated microscopic centers and treatment centers with the government of Delhi, mm, RN National TB Elimination Program Delhi. So most of them are on the uh, non-financial agreements we have with the states about our work, which we go on. Mm. With respect to the working models, uh, uh, I think like a single tire model would be useful uh, to implement this this type of setups, which we can take it up. My colleague Ramesh can add on if he has anything to add on. And the preference states is like we are at present working on the private provider engagement in five states in India. Any any of these states would be we'll be happy to take it up in this. Uh, in this initiative. So just probably we might be requiring certain more uh, clarity on the indicators and the performance-based funding because uh, certain things needs to be invested. Uh, we need to take up certain costs in the beginning so that uh, that needs to be taken up. So this is from my side and Ramesh, a brief if I missed anything you can add on. Thank you. Thanks Vikas. I think most of the points were covered. Right? In earlier to PMTPT program, we were also implementing uh, uh, PPSA program across uh, AP, Telangana, Delhi, Ariana, and Punjab to some extent. So to that, we had a, a good network with the formal providers, especially allopathic uh, providers like MBBS and labor qualified providers. And that was almost more of like, uh, uh, again, again, identifying the new symptomatic individuals, testing them and reporting through Nikshay based the reporting system. So altogether, we have more than like uh, 10 to 12 experience working with the private provider, uh, especially across all these states. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, regarding the earlier query that you raised, uh, regarding the data security, I think the entire health record data, the patient data, uh, the thing with the, the ABDM infrastructure is if, uh, uh, that no data is centrally stored. Uh, so uh, we are only providing the pathways that that sort of gives uh, the route to the data to travel from one place to another basis the consent by the data owner that is the patient who is the owner of the health record no data is stored by NHA or any centralized authority anywhere the data remains stored just the way it uh, currently is uh, in a physical setting the data remains stored at the health facility similar way the data would remain uh, stored with the concerned health facility on their servers so uh, there are no uh, data privacy or uh, related issues uh, i think we can go in further depth in our further discussions uh, especially also um, that we understand there are multiple questions regarding the microsite so we'll definitely go into the much deeper uh, details of the program in our further meetings um, i would now uh, invite the participant from uh, uh, World Health Partners to please uh, give a brief overview regarding these four points. Yeah, so um, I'm Dr. Neeta Jha. I just wanted to tell that we are working uh, in the private sector. I have, we have a long experience of working in the private sector. So uh, we are, currently we are working with the government uh, PPSA program in which we get reimbursement based on the notification and outcome of the patient. And Bihar, we are in eight districts and Sambal, we have Odisha, we are in one district and Punjab, we are in two districts. So we have mapped in Bihar uh, at least uh, 3,000, more than 3,000 facilities only in Bihar, uh, uh, health facilities. And we can uh, actually, uh, we can uh, integrate these systems because uh, we can train and integrate it could it is doable means it can be done so we need to be i mean uh, uh, get uh, and we are getting reimbursement from the government so that is not a problem we have already signed a contract with the government for the reimbursement so it will go on so it will be um, means that uh, training part and detail workout part is will be needed how we will train the front level workers uh, so that they come and do the work so all these will be needed, but it can be done. So we, uh, means we can do that. Hello. 
Yes, yes, you are audible. Okay. So for the earlier point, uh, I think uh, uh, TV alert uh, team uh, has that uh, more clarity about the indicators and the performance based funding. So uh, more or less, we are thinking that uh, funding would be more or less, the criteria are still not yet decided, but more or less it will be about the uh, the criteria which are which can be easily seen and which are objective and uh, uh, non-ambiguous. Uh, like uh, how many doctors have been registered on HFR, how many doctors have been registered on HPR, how many digital health records or inter interoperable health records are getting created in that particular microsite or with the help of that uh, field force, uh, how many health records are getting created. So these are, these are kind of the uh, criteria that we are thinking of uh, uh, putting the funding uh, subject to. And then we are also thinking that uh, as you rightly mentioned that uh, some investment or uh, mobilization uh, uh, mobilization amount would be required. So we are also thinking that we'll give some amount uh, uh, upfront uh, to mobilize the resources uh, because this complete activity, we, we are thinking that MHA is going to sponsor it and uh, we'll try to uh, uh, make it uh, uh, viable for the partners to run these microsites. Uh, yeah, yeah. Next participant. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Care India team, would you like to chip in? Sure. Thank you. From the domain experience perspective, uh, mostly we work with the government uh, organization on the non-financial MOUs has been signed with the government and mostly so 80% of our work with the government. But of course, we will be, we have worked a couple of uh, private provider engagement, especially on a research mode, whenever government has to do something, collect those information and uh, submit to the government uh, need-based experience from the engagement perspective. On the digital health, of course, we, we have a very good, um, uh, from the clinical side, we have good, good uh, uh, good team working uh, working with uh, care, and we are we are doing a lot of uh, accreditation, clinical uh, thing in Bihar and outside Bihar. We have a lot of engagement with the N NHSRC from the quality perspective, or there from the digital health per perspective. We also um, done a lot of implementation. Uh, actually, we are with the sandbox on sandbox. And uh, we are also trying to develop an application like ehms.app, uh, trying to give to government organization on a free of cost kind of thing. There is no software. We cannot sell as a not, not for the profit organization. We are building those application for free. So definitely we have that perspective, digital perspective. Also, if you take care as an organization, we have an implementation from the implementation side uh, previously, we have done uh, with the uh, Women and Child Development Department, we have rolled out uh, across 28 states, nearly 700,000 Anganwadi workers. So we are good in the capacity building, training, handholding in those areas from the digital health, of course, nutrition side we have done. And in Bihar, we have launched a lot of digital health application like East and Jimini scaled across uh, all 38 district, uh, E-Aushadi. So we handhold them mostly with the government engagement as a technical support unit we used to, we are supporting in Bihar. Of course, we, we, can, uh, we can spread our hands wherever we are there to private provide, nothing stops us because of the cap capability is there, capacity is there. Um, we, can, we can go ahead and uh, approach private providers wherever we are uh, 18 states across 18 state projects are there we can we can get into those area uh, and get those details i think uh, i feel i personally feel uh, from the private practitioner hpr and hfr is easy to do doable but migrating their hms so 60 70% there is no hms is running that may be a little challenge uh, to onboard them cost cost thing if you just get into that equipment internet 
this could be a new thing for them some of the the not using uh, the fear is income tax i am into healthcare it almost 22 years i dealt a lot of doctors in private before coming into the ngo i was with them so there is a fear factor from the onboarding so how to how to take away that that one area i feel there is a challenge we have to figure it out what is the cost and what is the incentive to get into hmis and second thing is above 30 bed hospital 100 bed hospital already they may have those uh, digital uh, long long term usage of digital application how they can migrate it to abdm what what it takes to add those abdm components within their application what is the cost factor rate we need to look at all those things we have to you will have you will find these two kind of at least these two kind of uh, setup in private provider engagement so um, of course we have necessary capacity to understand the complexity come out with a uh, innovative solution within this uh, arena uh, from the Actually, we are a Section A company, non, not for the profit. Uh, I need to check with our uh, auditors and, and finance department, but uh, we cannot bid for uh, any project along with the profit-making organization. If government pays uh, directly to us, we can, as a grant, we can take it, state government. With Andhra Pradesh, we have done this exercise. We have supported uh, in Andhra Pradesh. Um, so. I think that is there is a possibility. We need to look at it. Um, we'll come back to you on that and more. Uh, in in uh, what is the right way to get it? Or we, we are excited to engage with you because wherever available, we can put our hand also. Um, okay. A couple of states like Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Gujarat. These states and all we are there. We can take up. We can discuss. We can detail on the okay thank you thank you sir uh, i would now now request uh, deepak foundation team to please uh, share your uh, thoughts uh, in the interest of time i'll request the participants to please uh, be a little brief as uh, we are approaching the finish time now uh, deepak foundation team please Uh, so we can't hear you. Uh, no, I was uh, just making sure. Is it Disha Foundation? I am uh, Dr. Shubhan Foundation. Uh, 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 I work... actually called for the Deepak Foundation, but uh, oh, Deepak. Uh, okay. So please, uh, from Disha Foundation side, you can begin, please. Yes, yes. So we work in multiple districts in uh, Maharashtra and Goa with PPSA. And we work with thousands of private providers, even uh, Ayush private providers. And uh, uh, one point I would like to raise here is uh, the challenges which we had initially while working with private providers, which was that uh, in the lack of any incentive, they were not referring TB cases to um, the government system. And uh, at the moment, I cannot see uh, any kind of uh, such measure uh, which was presented here. So it's very difficult because um, if uh, the private provider has to shift to a MIS system, which he or she is not using earlier, uh, at the initi initial step, uh, if not later, they will definitely need some kind of an incentive to uh, make them shift to a digital system. So I think that will be something which uh, we need to discuss at uh, some step. But uh, yes, we have been working with private providers and we know uh, what they think and um, how they can uh, be onboarded on this and we can definitely um, do this kind of work as a, as a complementary work to what we are already doing. And uh, as far as other plan, other points, uh, we can yes definitely receive from from government organizations. We can, um, I think, the single tier model um, uh, at uh, especially smaller 
districts or smaller cities or towns might work better than the two-tier model. Uh, and uh, yes, we, we can definitely um, uh, work with you on this in Maharashtra and Goa. So that's so what we Just a small clarification that uh, we already have a digital health incentive scheme and uh, we have a dedicated portal for it in which uh, every healthcare facility who is produce, who are generating a data health records, interoperable data health records, gets uh, at least 20 for every record. And the uh, computer solution or the software through which this solution, this data health record is created, that company also gets uh, 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 an incentive for, for every record created in any hospital or any facility where those solutions are getting used for generation of data health records. So that that incentive could maybe uh, uh, can uh, can you know fill up the change in behavior of the private practitioners can also offset some of the costs which are uh, uh, ostensibly uh, you know, uh, 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 can be can be one of the roadblocks or for for change from analogous to data. So show it next please. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I would now uh, like to invite the Maharashtra Jan Kalyan NGO team. Uh, please, if you can briefly uh, tell us about your points. Yeah. Uh, good evening, all. So Maharashtra Jan Vikas Kendra, last uh, uh, 2014 se private sector engagement mein involved in Mumbai or Peri Mumbai area. And in 2014 to 18, we path ke saath PPI project in, implement kiya tha. So yes, हम लोग हमारा जो एनजीओ है हम प्राइवेट सेक्टर इंगेजमेंट 2014 से कर रहे हैं और 2018 से हम पीपीएसए मॉडल जो है मुंबई में रन कर रहे हैं टोटल 11 डिस्ट्रिक्स में और हमारा टोटल एक 6500 डॉक्टर्स का नेटवर्क है और रिगार्डिंग फंड्स के रिलेटेड से तो अभी हम जो पीपीएसए मॉडल रन कर रहे हैं हम वहां पे एमसीजीएम और स्टेट से हमको फंड्स रिसीव होता है उसके साथ-साथ जो मुंबई डिस्ट्रिक्ट टीबी कंट्रोल सोसाइटी है वहां पे भी हमारे और भी स्कीम्स है जैसे एलटी स्कीम्स है सैंपल ट्रांसपोर्टेशन स्कीम्स है जो मुंबई और पेरी मुंबई में हम इंप्लीमेंट कर रहे हैं तो डेफिनेटली हम फंड्स जो है वो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट से रिसीव कर सकते हैं थैंक यू सर आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू मूव टू न्यूरोस एंड एप्टिक्स टीम इफ यू कैन प्लीज हाय आई एम समीर फ्रॉम न्यूरोस एंड एप्टिक्स so basically, uh, we work with both the private uh, providers uh, and we have engagement with private providers as well as uh, uh, NGOs or uh, uh, non-government but uh, not necessarily for profit kind of uh, providers. And uh, uh, this is a moderate kind of engagement. Basically, they are involved in all the projects for consultations, etc. We are a telemedicine and digital health company out and out. So the devices that we manufacture are integrated with e Sanjeevani. We are in the process of integrating the HIPAA compliant remedy solution into uh, ABDM at this point of time, uh, uh, ABHA uh, and so on. And uh, uh, also providing services in telehealth in multiple districts. At this point of time, about 12 states with different projects uh, is where we reach through either our solution or our own implementation. Uh, we do not have any uh, issue in receiving funds from government, uh, though most of the uh, existing models of engagement are uh, funded by the private organizations and CSRs when we deal with or implement things in government. Uh, uh, and mostly with the government, it is a non-commercial kind of an arrangement uh, or, an, or an MOU. Uh, we, uh, we have mostly been in the technology and implementation of it. So the guidance and monitoring part becomes a part of every project in any case, if it is related to CSR. So, uh, however, we think a single entity doing the monitoring evaluation, maybe uh, uh, with appropriate uh, uh, data submission, et cetera, would be the best to implement such programs. And uh, any of the states which are, uh, which where we have projects, uh, any of the 12 states, including Maharashtra, UP, or uh, uh, any of those uh, states where we have projects, we will be extremely happy to uh, partner here and implement together. Uh, thank you. Uh, Piramal Swasti. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sovit, and thank you, Dr. Akshay, for taking us through the core objectives of um, uh, uh, this particular engagement. Uh, we at Piramal Swasti, are having at least more than 10 years of implementing experience, large-scale implementation experience. And uh, 
Uh, with that, we have also the uh, digital uh, health capability embedded with us. We have our own HMI solution, Amrit, which is accessible medical records via integrated technology, which is completely ABDM uh, compliant, uh, M1, M2, M3, uh, 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 all the milestones. And, uh, and we are uh, completely fine uh, with receiving funds from uh, the N uh, NHA or any of the state governments as well because of the uh, core relationship for the long period of time that we have we, we have been having with the state governments. We are present uh, in Assam, Bihar, and we are also doing operations in the Aspirational uh, Districts uh, program. So we are also uh, be able to do uh, the pilots in the remote areas as well. So perfectly uh, uh, happy and to take that uh, partnership and uh, the pilot. Uh, only thing is that we have not worked with any private organizations, but the strong workforce that we have on the ground and the relationship that we have already developed with the state governments, we are absolutely clear that we'll be able to take it up. In fact, we have already started uh, having discussion with the private uh, players who will be able to customize their solution for the uh, small clinics and uh, uh, the private uh, uh, clinics also where we can be able to leverage that because we have already a solution which is conducive for public health system, which is completely free for the state to use. And we can also partner with any of the private uh, providers to get that done so that the entire pilot can be done. So absolutely no issue on two tier and single tier model also, we can do any of the model. And we will prefer also low resource and uh, low capacity states like Bihar, Assam, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, any of the state, we are perfectly fine to do that. Uh, thank you. Uh, Khushi Baby team, uh, I think that you have joined recently. So if you can briefly chip in on these points. Khushi Baby team, we have someone? Okay. Hello. Yes. This is Harul Srinivasan from Khushi Baby. Uh, so uh, for us, single tire mode will be more suitable as we have uh, uh, development team and the policy team for monitoring and evaluation uh, as well as um, we have uh, most projects running with government relations uh, in big scale uh, as well as some private projects uh, uh, like uh, across India so uh, uh, also like uh, in Mumbai we have uh, one bigger project on uh, warrior hospital uh, on the digital health uh, platform so uh, like uh, any region like uh, remote areas will will be suitable for us okay and uh, any issues regarding receiving funds or uh... Uh, well uh, we we are an ngo so all development charges uh, are like uh, completely free of cost so uh, regarding the funds part like uh, so i mean uh, i'm mostly from developer team uh, so, like uh, our business team uh, on the next call, uh, they can reply more uh, regarding that. Okay. Okay. And uh, lastly, if we have anyone from Deepak Foundation team. Okay. Okay. So, uh, if I've missed anyone, uh, please uh, feel free to join the discussion now. Uh, or uh, we have completed the whole round of all the organization. I think we have we have completed the whole round, sir. So uh, maybe thank you, everyone. Uh, we have noted down your points and your uh, uh, feedback about it. Uh, uh, we are also thinking that uh, either to save time, uh, whether we should impanel people or make a tentative list of people or the partners who are going to do it, or we can approach states directly where you people have direct presence and where uh, uh, we can uh, 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 we can uh, you know uh, combine this effort with one of the existing effort or one of the existing engagement that you have with the private sector, uh, private providers as well as the state. Uh, so all these things we are looking into and uh, I again thank you uh, for uh, giving us your time and your uh, valuable suggestions in this. Uh, Shobit, if you have anything to add, uh, I hope we have uh, noted down everything. Uh, yes, sir, we have. And um, 
uh, i would also like to mention that this is the, this was the first discussion and uh, we'll have more such discussion so that we can explain the program in depth and uh, see how our partnership can be uh, extended uh, i'll i'll briefly request all the remaining partners to please uh, write down if if it's possible write down your contact details uh, in the chat box so that our, our team can create a whole database so that we can further connect on various issues uh, related to the engagement further so if it's possible please share your contact details in the chat box we would like to thank all of you for sparing time and joining this discussion and uh, i hope that uh, we'll be able to continue this discussion further we'll have uh, more rounds of discussion and hope to see you there in in our further rounds of discussion thanks a lot once again for joining this uh, meeting today thank you everyone thank you thank you dr Asha. thank you thank you dr sobhi thank you so much thank you everyone